Yeah, so as I was saying, today we'll go into a little more detail. Um, as I was saying, chest x-rays. The x-rays usually doesn't come with reports because we expect that every clinician should be able to fairly um, be comfortable with the interpretation of chest x-rays and pain x-rays in general. So it's important that we have a good command of the subject. So um, a little more detail from where we ended yesterday. So x-rays were first discovered by Rangen whilst he was doing some experiments with um, a I'm sure you all remember your secondary school first year when you talk about cattle grow trees and all that. So um, you can read on this one, um, mainly for multiple choice question type of things, not this year. I'm not saying they are not important, I'm saying that you can go through them for the sake of MCT, all right? Okay. So there's another um, diagram showing how X-rays are generated. Okay, so the uh, heated filaments here will produce the beams. They will hit this target here as the electron beams will hit this tungsten, as we mentioned yesterday. And then the X-rays are generated and they pass through the window. So basically the patient, as the uh, X-rays are coming out like this, the patient will be at this point, and then the film will be behind the patient at this point, something like that. Okay, so yesterday we talked about bone uh, metal being the highest, but in the body, the bone has the highest absorption and will appear white. Air will appear black. And in between, the other tissues are in between, they're about. So, we'll talk about the plain x ray, which is the most commonly requested x ray. Um, the most commonly requested chest x ray is the PAV, that is the posterior anterior view posterior anterior view. And this is the most frequently requested radiological examination. And, um, in this particular case, if you if you have old films, it's um, beneficial to compare them to current ones that you are taking to be able to detect pathologies. So for instance, if someone has taken an X-ray about six months ago and has a current pathology now, so it would be good to be able to compare, if it's available, to compare them to be able to know what uh, pathology is there. So basically, so this is another image again. So this is the film. The film is in this figure. I hope you can watch the cursor. So the film is inside this part. Then the x-rays will come from behind the patient. So the x-rays will pass through the patient and hit the film here. Okay. The bones or other substances or material that have high atomic mass will absorb the rays and not allow it to pass and get here. And so those areas will appear more white on the image compared to areas that are unable to absorb much, such as air or fluid filled areas, which will allow more of the rays to pass and therefore appear more black. So this is simply it. So the way we do it is that we let the patient face the film. If the chin is up, so you can see step forward. When they will take their shoulders for you, you know, they let them put their hands by the wrist. Then they move their elbows forward, and that is rotating the arms forward. What happens when you do that is that it causes the scapula. The scapula we know covers the mat of the back. It will move laterally so that there will be more space for the um, ribs and therefore the lung parenchyma to show. I hope you understand that. So they put their chin here on top here. They put their hands on their waist and try to move their elbows forward. And that sort of separates the um, 
carefully away from the back and allow the wheels to go so yeah and also at this point i'm sure you've all taken this before they'll ask you to take in a deep break okay so when you are at the height of the deep break then the x will be taken okay and we'll understand that shortly now there's also another one that we do which is the lateral test surgery this also has a special indication that we'll look at shortly um the advantages are that it allows that the advantage of of the posterior anterior view to the lateral view are that it allows anterior mediastinal masses such as insisted pleural effusions or posterior basal consolidations to be visualized better so a simple question that you could get is you could be given a scenario of some of these conditions here and you'll be asked which of the uh, which type of x-ray would you request for the patient and why then you should be able to explain you know um yeah or basically what are the advantages of a lateral x-ray a chest x-ray to uh, a posterior anterior um x-ray the disadvantage however is that a lung collapse and large pleural effusions may not be visualized well Okay, so you should take note of these things when you are ordering this investigation. Then this is also the lateral decubitus position. These are all chest x-rays, all right? So it's important to help um, assess the volume of pleural effusion and demonstrate whether pleural effusion is mobile or located. So sometimes there are certain uh, instances where you see a pleural effusion in the chest but you are not sure whether it is a type of fluid that you can pass a chest to. Because mind you, if the pleural effusion is loculated, a pleural effusion might not be effective in draining. So after you've taken an x-ray and you realize there's pleural effusion, or when you, you know there's a pleural effusion, when you let the person lie on the side like this and take the x-ray, then you would be able to see the air fluid level that will let you know that this fluid is mobile. So for instance, the first line on the side, the white part that you are seeing here, okay, this is the fluid, this is pleural effusion in the chest. Okay, if it was not, um, uh, it wasn't mobile fluid, okay, or if it was fluid that was loculated, you realize that even when the person lies down, the fluid will still be upright. I get you. So that is how you're able to tell that this fluid here is mobile and can be drained. It also gives a fair idea of the function. Okay. So then, um, now, as I mentioned earlier, we need to know why um, we prefer an inspiratory x ray over um, an expiratory one. Okay. Now, Look at these two x rays side by side. The one on the left here is an x ray taken at maximum inspiration. And the one here is an x ray that is taken at expiration. Now, the advantage is that when you inspire or you ask the person to breathe in deeply, you realize that the diaphragm moves. You're able to see much of the uh, chest, you know, as compared to the diaphragm. So on the right, you realize that the diaphragm is um, the diaphragm is higher up, and so it's difficult to see the lower lung bases from this one. Okay, and also because of the inspiration, you realize that the posterior ribs here are looking more straight compared to this one, where because there's a the, the ribs have come down. I don't know if you can see this one. So if you are asked to ask to um, explain how you tell the difference between an inspiratory x-ray and an expiratory x-ray, um, these are some of the things. We'll look at more in a bit. But basically, from this picture, I'm sure it's clear to you that the inspiratory x-ray, the posterior ribs are more 
uh, vertical, I mean, horizontal, as compared to the one on the right, which was taken in exploration, and the ribs are almost um, curving downward. Right. Okay. So, um, so uh, uh, something similar to what the picture we just saw earlier. So this, the PA form on the left compared with an AP supine form on the right. So the same comparison again. The AP shows magnification of the heart and widening of the mediastinum. So if you look at another problem, aside you being able to see more, so here I realize that we're able to see more of the lungs than here. The other problem is that you realize that over here, the heart looks much bigger. The heart here looks much bigger than over here. And that is what you get when you take an AP X-ray instead of a PA. AP versus PA. We started by saying that the PA X-ray is the most preferred X-ray for a number of reasons as we are now elaborating. One allows you to see more of the, of the lungs or the chest, okay? And AP also, the disadvantage here is that it also makes the mediastinum. So look at the mediastinum also looking really huge. We'll look at all the various descriptions later. Okay. So mediastinum is the space just between the two lungs. We'll look at it later. Yeah. So you can see that this mediastinum looks big compared to big, this one. And then also the heart is looking much bigger than this one, but it is just because of the view. So if you have patients who are very ill and cannot stand to have a peer view x-ray, you should be able to um, interpret the x-rays well. And that is why x-rays are also labeled. So the one who has done the x-ray will tell you whether it is an AP or PAV, so that you interpret what you are seeing there effectively. Okay. So for instance, I could ask you a question that a patient um, uh, what do you call it? Has taken an X ray in a PAV or APV. Which of these would you expect to see? Then I could ask you maybe the heart will be, uh, the heart will look big, and the center will look big, blah, 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 blah. You know. So um, those are things that you should look out for. Okay. 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 Yes. So as we were describing, so you can see, so you can still see the inspiratory X-ray on the left and the inspiratory X-ray on the right. You realize on the inspiratory X-ray, you are able to see at least six of the X-ray of the ribs. You see that there are about six ribs that are visible here. Okay. There are six ribs visible. But over here, you can see because this is an expiratory. Uh, uh, what do you call it? X ray. You know, the lungs have, have come out. I hope you remember your physiology. I mean, inspiration, expiration. Remember what happens in all of these things. So the diaphragm has moved up in these cases, and so it has reduced the space available for you to see. Unlike here, where the diaphragm has moved forward, so you're able to see much more of the chest. So um, one of the things that we are able to do is that we draw a mid-clavicular line. So a mid-clavicular line, tell you what a mid-clavicular line is. If you draw a line through the clavicle, okay, that is how we are able to see how many of the ribs fall on it. Same thing has been done here, but you can see that it's only two ribs that are showing. Okay. So the technicalities of the respiratory uh, X-ray are what we have just said. So the patient should inspire maximally. So you take the shot at the height of inspiration. And we said that it shows better the pulmonary uh, abnormalities. And the diaphragm pounds, this is the diaphragm pound, okay? The diaphragm pound is about the level of the eight to 10 anterior ribs or the six to six anterior ribs uh, on the good situation. So 
before is going to afford to compress and overcrowd the lung matrix. So if the person is unable to inspire well, you realize that the lung tissue itself will not expand well, and it might appear to you even like a uh, consolidation, or you might see things which are not there, or see things as abnormal when you do they are not. Okay, so centering. Now, the other thing, technical issue when taking x rays, is to be able to ensure that the person is facing the, the x ray um, directly and not rotated to the left or rotated to the right. So you, you, you figure this out by looking for the media end of the clavicle. So the media at the ends of the clavicle should be equidistant from the spinous process at T4 or T5. If the person is rotated, the, the media standard borders can be distorted. And the lines which will be nearer to the film will appear less transition. So this is also something you consider when you are looking at an X-ray. So before you we'll go through the schematic way of reading X-rays, and then when you when you take uh, an X-ray, you should be able to run through that algorithm to be able to effectively interpret the chest X-ray. All right. Now, so one of the things that you look out for is sure that there is centering, and centering simply means that the um, the ends of the clavicles are equidistant from the spinous processes at T5 or T4. And as I'm saying, if the person is rotated either a bit to the left or to the right, you realize that the part of the body that is um, uh, more towards the, the film will appear more uh, opaque. That is, and the part that is closest will rather appear less uh, translucent. That means that it will be more opaque and appear as if there's consolidation in that point. Meanwhile, it is just, um, uh, what do you call it? There is a position well on the edge. So remember that. Okay. I can ask you what will be the effect of poor centering during the chest x-ray or taking a chest x-ray. So you'll be able to tell me that, um, a, a, in a good way of telling whether the centering is to be sure that um, the, the clavicle and the media ends are at equal distance from T45 spinal process. Okay. Otherwise, the part that is nearer the film will be more okay. So giving you the wrong picture that there might be consolidation when you do the review. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. Now, when you take the X-ray, you should be able to draw an imaginary line between the spinous processes. The spinous processes, I'm talking to anatomy students, so I'm sure you all know um, what spinous process is. Uh, we have better picture somewhere. Okay, we will see spinal processes shortly. Uh, yes. So can you all see this point here, this point here, this point here? These are the spinal processes of the vertebra. The spinal process of the vertebra. So you should be able to draw an imaginary line through the spinous processes, okay? What we are saying for a good, for an X-ray to not be rotated and to give you a correct and proper PAV, we are saying that the media end of the clavicle, there's the clavicle, there's the clavicle here, another clavicle here. Now, we are saying that the media ends of the clavicle, this, uh, left clavicle, right clavicle. What we are saying is that the um, the media end should be equidistant from the spinal process. So the spinal processes are here, and 
the media ends are equidistant with. So you realize that on this particular x-ray on the right left, this chest x-ray on the left, the, the one here is further away from the, uh, uh, the spinal spaces compared to here. So here is closer. Here is closer than here. I hope you are getting it. Compared to this one here, look at where the spinal process is. It's right in the middle here. And the media end of this clavicle is equidistant to this one here. Okay. So you have the media end here, another media end here. And in between is the spinal process running right through the middle. So this is a chest x ray where there is no rotation. On this chest x ray, there is no rotation. Why? Because the media ends of the clavicles are equidistant from the spinal spaces. I hope this is clear. And, uh, thank you. Right. So further, going further, uh, yes, yeah, so going further, um, what are the implications if uh, one media end of a clavicle is closer than the other? If the spinous process appears closer to the right clavicle, okay, then it means that the patient is rotated to their own left, okay? And if the spinous process appears closer to the left, then it means that the person is rotated to the right. Okay, so on this x ray down here, the spinal process are visible one here, another one here, another one here. And you can see that this clavicle here, okay, on this picture, there's a left clavicle, okay. And it is closer to the spinal process compared to look at where the spinal process ends. Okay, so this spinal process is further away from the spinal process. Okay, so because the left clavicle is closer to the spinal process, it means that the uh, the person is rotated on his right. So the person is a bit bent um, to the right. That is what we are talking about. So look at the media end of this clavicle. Look at the spiral process in the middle here, and then the end of the other clavicle. And you can realize an obvious detail that this clavicle is too big. Okay. And if this is the left, then it means that the person is located on the right. So another problem when you have um, rotation on the chest x is that it makes the pulmonary arteries to appear larger uh, on the side further away from the film. He said that the part of the x ray that is um, that the patient will take to will appear more radio opaque. Another issue is that the, blood, the pulmonary arteries on the side, which is on the other side, which is the side which is further away, will appear more uh, larger. Okay. It will appear larger than usual. And then you start making interpretations and subjecting the patient to treatments that may not be warranted. So I think we mentioned this yesterday. So um, penetration is a degree to which X-rays are absorbed through the body. So you are seeing that normally the vertical body should be just visible through the heart. The vertical body should be just visible through the heart. So this is how you, yesterday we talked about under uh, exposure and over exposure. Okay, and now we're explaining how you be able to tell. Aside just looking at the picture and seeing this is under the two ways of the, uh, This is uh, another way or a more objective way of telling. So normally you'd expect that the vertical body should 
the yes, the smoky the heart. That is the vegetable bodies in the chest. You should be able to see them just barely through the heart. Okay. And the degree of that is for a normal uh, a well exposed chest x the uh, the vegetable body should just be seen behind the heart or be seen through the heart. Uh, and this depends on the ABD. That is the energy of the x -ray. So um, if it has high penetrability, then or for the higher energy implies a higher penetrability, and this allows it to move through the tissue more easily. So if you give it high energy, then you will have overexposure. If you give it low energy, then you have an underexposure. So that's what I was saying that what a properly done is we realize that the vertical bodies here, the vertical bodies, even though the heart is here, you can just see them here. You can also see that. So the heart is over here, the heart is here, but the spinous process can be seen here. So these are pictures from yesterday. So under penetrated, over penetration. So you realize that in this one here, the vertebral bodies are not visible to the heart. That means that it is under penetrated. And the uh, x-rays, too much of it passed through the vertebra. So it's over penetration. So basically, we are going to um, so this is the normal anatomy of the uh, X-ray, the chest X-ray. So these are the various parts that you should. So this picture, everyone should get used to this picture. Everyone should get used to this picture. Because it is the knowledge of these various parts of the chest x ray that will help you to be able to make a good interpretation of the, um, the x ray when it's presented to you. So, if you don't know where the right atrium is, you don't know where the left ventricle is, you don't know where the gastric bubble is, you don't know where the gastric bubble is, and so on and so forth. You realize that you will be found wanting. So this picture, you should all know the various parts as has been labeled nicely here for you. All right. Oh. So, um, so over here, the air space up here is our trachea. The spinous processes are seen through it. This is our rib. The scapula is over here somewhere. The profile process is here. The hilum is here. The left ventricle, you know, see. Um, when you come down here, you realize that I have the diaphragm. This is the one on the right, and this is the one on the left. And you can see the gastric bubble here. And then also, another very important part of the success we that we have is the costophrenic angles, costophrenic angles. That is the angle that the lungs form with the ribs. That is costo, that's ribs. Phrenic, that's lung, uh, it's diaphragm, all right? So costophrenic angle. So make sure you take note of this. And study it and study it and study it and study it until you'll be able to easily tell the parts of the chest x ray. Now, this is also an x ray of the lateral chest. So, this is a normal lateral chest x ray. So, over here also, the fact is uh, uh, well maybe for us to see. So you see that the whole um, um, so it's labeled one all the way down to level. So we can see 
our ascending aorta, arch of aorta, and the descending aorta down here. Number two here is the sternum, which you can all see here. The number three is the um, right ventricle here. Number, oh no, number, uh, number three here is the right ventricle. Number four is the left ventricle. Number five is the left atrium. The left ventricle, left atrium, uh, right atrium, right ventricle. Yes. Um, we have a gastric bubble. The gastric bubble is the extra space of air or the collection of air in the stomach. Now, mind you, the gastric bubble is just the air fluid level that is seen in the stomach. I hope that is clear. Or is the air fluid levels? It simply means that you know water will definitely settle down and air will come up. So the sharp demarcation or the sharp contrast between the relative locations are seen on x ray. What we refer to as air fluid um, level. All right. So this is the gastric bubble. This is the air fluid level. This is the fluid level. Okay, so I want us to take a break on this picture here. So, um, a requested scheme for viewing the PA flow. So, when you have a chest x ray, these are the rules I want you to run through. Look at the request form, mean age, sex, blah, 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 the technicalities, whether it is good or bad. We talk about the physical position, how many um, the heart and the stand on the diaphragm throughout this months and then that. So let's end or uh, let's take a break at this point. So can be going to uh, I think I have to uh, attend to some other matters. Okay, so at this juncture, I think um, we'll continue. Should I? Um, let me see how many slides. Okay, so we are around uh, slide 22. Okay, so let's let's continue. Um, 